So, we're here. We have to be careful here and here. And with a bit of luck, we should make it through here and end up here. To recap, this then is our house. That's the end of our road. We turn right past the roundabout where the shops are. There's the school, drop the kids off. We should make it back, mission accomplished. So obviously, we're gonna need a four before. Well, that's what everybody else uses to tackle the urban commute, isn't it? And our chosen steed is this, the all-new Ford Maverick. Whilst the previous Maverick was nothing more than a spot of badge engineering on a Nissan Tirano, this new one is just that, it is new, and it's made entirely from Ford jeans. It's a competitor in the lightweight SUV sports utility vehicle market. In other words, a competitor for the likes of the RAV4, the CRV, and Ford's arch enemy, the Vauxhall Frontera. Every time a new 4x4 is launched, whoever makes it, the manufacturer will say, oh, it drives just like a car. Well, it doesn't. They never do. It's a 4x4. It's tall. It's got longer suspension. It's got huge unsprung weight with the extra transmission. But, in the case of the Maverick, it's not far off. It's not at all bad. Big wobbly monster, it isn't. The most direct comparison is going to be with the Vauxhall Frontera. Ooh, you can feel it shudder when I mention it. So they've got to answer to the impressive Frontera V6, and they have with this 3-litre V6. It's basically a bored out and enlarged version of the 2.5-litre Duratec familiar to Mondeo owners. There is a 2-litre option as well. This one will dash from 0 to 60 in about 10 and a half seconds and onto a top speed of 118. Not much, but it's actually quite respectable for a car in this sector. Checking out a new car that claims to be good both on and off-road and only driving it on the road would be a bit like having a Swiss Army penknife and only using the blade and not the scissors. So we've got to have a go, we just need a bit of mud. Alright, so it's hardly crossing the Andes, but this is about as rough as it's likely to get for one of these cars. Maybe romping across a field to find the best picnic spot. So this is probably a fair enough test. It's hardly a mud plugger's dream, but it's got the basics to get you out of trouble. Ordinarily on the road, the drive is delivered to the front wheels. But if you are getting off-road and you detect a bit of slippage, power will be transferred to the rear. Alternately, you can do it yourself manually by switching to permanent 4x4. As soon as you get off-road, things like rather vague steering no longer matter. There are a couple of problems, though. The throttle on this particular one is incredibly sensitive, so it wouldn't be too difficult to get into a bit of a kangarooing situation. It does suffer, though, from something I've noticed in one or two SUVs recently. They claim to be off-road capable-ish, and yet they've got absolutely no steering lock, which is useless if you want to change direction in a, a nasty, cramped bit of woodland or maybe at the top of a bendy, twisty track. Not a good point in an off-roader. The very fact that this car is compromised means it's never going to be a star or anything, but if you want something that can romp across a field happily and get you to that best picnic spot before anybody else without the wheels falling off, yeah, it'll do the job. Of course, when you do finally pull up at the perfect picnic spot, the last thing you want to do as you stretch out in your blanket is look across at a real moose of a car. And Ford haven't done a bad job here. It's not the most striking of cars, but it's not ugly either. There is something spookily Freelanderish about the front end, though, and along the flanks. Odd, really, that they should copy a car made by a company that they also own. When you get to the rear, there's something slightly Jeep Cherokee-ish about it. A large part of an SUV's job is to be a fashion statement. It's got to look like it could take Davy Crockett hunting caribou in Alaska but all you're actually going to do is cruise the high street. Despite what the manufacturers might say, these things are not really about romping down to the lake with your jet skis on the back and your mountain bikes on the roof. They're about going to the shops, dropping the kids off at school. Day-to-day, -day, ordinary, boring stuff that somehow a car with this extra space around you makes that a bit easier and a bit more pleasurable. And that's what it's about. It's boring, but it's true. If you fancy one, you won't have to be a millionaire to buy one, because for the 2-litre you'll pay about 17 grand, and for the 3-litre you'll pay about 20 grand. They may not be the most exciting vehicle on the road, but whether you're going on or off-road, they'll do the job. <laughs>